This little video is uh, for those folks who were asking about the modifications I made to my uh, my build platform on my MakerBot replicator. I had ordered a new build plate from BC Technological Solutions to um, uh, ease, make it easier to support glass build platforms. It's a little bit bigger build surface and um, it can take 10 to 15 minutes to warm up. Um, he chose to use uh, the same 130 watt heater because of the limitation of the replicator's power supply. And um, I wanted, I wanted the, the build platform to heat up much quicker. And so I thought about the simplest thing to do would really be just to add a second heater and um, and in my case, I chose a 275 watt heater from RapidIndustrialSupply.com. It was about fifty dollars, and then I bought a I don't know it was about a ten fifteen dollar thermocouple, which is right here. And I've got that kind of I peeled up the the lowest um, the original 130 watt heater, and I just stuck it under there, and then put it back down. Now the pad I ordered had an adhesive back but I found it just wasn't sticky enough so I went out and bought some red RTV silicone that's what you see kind of squeezing out here to hold it down and then I think it's fairly important to to clamp it down I had some other clamps on here as well at the time it's all set up now uh, but uh, my plan is is that I'll I'll use a little temperature controller and I'll set it to maybe one or two degrees underneath what my want my build platform to be and so uh, that way the replicator heater only has to only has to bring the temperature up a degree or two so both heaters will be working um, you know the, the the replicator heater will still do the temperature monitoring through its thermistor right here um, that that'll actually you know determine the actual build temperature and then I'll just set this temperature controller to be a few degrees under and so now instead of a 130 watt heater trying to heat the build platform we'll have 275 uh, plus 130 and and I also decided to get a 110 volt heater because of just the wire sizes and and the supplies and and uh, even the size of the relays needed so so in this case you know you can see how small this wire is this heater uses about 2.6 amps at 100 at 110 volts so I don't know that's probably about a third of what the MakerBot heater has to draw because it's only at 24 volts and so uh, so by going to 110 volts a 275 watt heater really doesn't have a lot of wire requirements and in fact this little temperature controller which uh, actually came from automationdirect.com uh, but there's lots of places to get these from I I bought this one because uh, it has an RS-485 interface on it and I can I can actually hook it into an automation home automation controller and uh, keep an eye on it that way but anyways it's a little 3 amp onboard relay you can hear it cycling maybe it uh, runs this heater just fine. No SSR needed. No no outside uh, relay. So you know we just have the the power coming into the temp. It's a 110 volt temperature controller. Maybe I'll come around to the back here and you can see the wiring that comes in. This is this is the power coming in and then and then it just runs up to a to the output relay right here and then over to the over to the heater and. Uh, and then the thermist or the it's a J type thermocouple is what I'm using and it hooks up to the device right here. Like I said, I see I see lots of these little temperature controllers. This is probably a little more expensive one because it has the the RS eighty four eighty five bus on it uh, and it talks uh, Modbus. But if you don't need that, I think something in that thirty forty dollar range would probably do the job just fine. They have lots of ways of bringing the temperature up. I'm going to experiment with a few of them and see which one gives me the best results for this application, which I haven't done yet, but uh, that's, uh, that's how it uh, looks so far. Now it's been installed. You can see the build plate is 
is in there and um, wires are run. I For now I just have the temperature controller sitting out here and you can see the wires and the thermistor coming out. At some point I might 3D print a little case and maybe add a toggle switch or something so I can have a little cutout. So now we'll do a little test to see how how long it takes for the build platform to reach 100 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to come down on the MakerBot here and tell it to preheat. So start preheating and then I'm going to plug in my little temperature controller here and then over here I'm going to start a stopwatch. And this thing hasn't quite there. Now that heater has kicked on and of course the MakerBot is kicked on. It's a little cool out here in the shop, about 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see it begin its march up. I'm going to pause the video a little bit here. Okay, we're about two minutes into it and you can see the MakerBot's reporting uh, about 90 degrees, the temperature controller is reporting about 80, and that's I've noticed that it seems to uh, be it. The MakerBot overshoots once everything stabilizes, then the MakerBot comes a little more into parity with what the other temperature controller. So there it is, 100 degrees according to the to the MakerBot. So that's about. Two minutes and 40 seconds or so which is quite an improvement from whatever the the 10 minutes plus that I was waiting before especially with this new build platform and you can see that it's overshooting according to the maker bot but that but that give it a, another minute or two and it and it actually comes back down again and the two actually wind up matching fairly closely I don't know if that's the thermistor or the, the PID loop they're using or, or what it is but um, works very well now I can just I don't have to preheat at all I, I can come out and by the time the computer is done creating the g-code the, uh, the the build platforms hot and ready to go you can see according to this it's scooted all the way up to 114 so I mean, it literally takes no time at all to uh, to get this thing hot. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's one of the best little upgrades I've I've done on this thing. I really got tired of, of waiting for that build platform. So there you have it. A simple, easy way to reduce your your uh, startup times dramatically, especially in between builds too. Thanks for watching.